Tonight, I'm going to take a picture of one of the most epic sights in all of space, the Horsehead Nebula. This deep sky object lies in the constellation Orion, right in Orion's belt next to the bright star Alnitat. The Flame Nebula is right in there too, and I'll frame up my photo to include that as well. Since the moon is out in full force tonight, I'll use a hydrogen filter to collect new impactful details to apply to some existing color data I have on this project. I'm pretty sure I take a new picture of the Horsehead Nebula every year and it always happens around that week between Christmas and New Year's. It's a tough time of year for astrophotography around these parts. When you do get a small window of opportunity, you need to seize the moment. The Horsehead Nebula itself is a region of opaque dark dust that sits in front of a vivid bright red emission nebula and it really does look like a horse's head. This one's not open to interpretation. It's a horse for sure. The bright red emission nebula contrasts the cool blue stars in the area, the reflection nebulae, and the paler flame nebula next door. This mix of colors and dynamic objects make the Horsehead Nebula one of the most photographed regions in the night sky. Whether you're using a stock DSLR camera and lens or a CCD camera and a large telescope, the Horsehead Nebula is a real crowd pleaser from any angle. It's very cloudy this time of year and tonight's forecast is only calling for semi-clear skies for about an hour or two. But I desperately need to collect more exposure time on this project to finish it off, so I really hope that everything works out. If you haven't experienced deep sky astrophotography in the winter before, get ready. For the first time in 10 years, I have a place to store my equipment under the stars year round. The Black Dog Observatory is always ready for action, even if I only get an hour of clear sky time. This means that I don't need to spend an hour setting up my big mount and telescope, and best of all, tear it all down later in the middle of the night or the morning after in the cold. I still set up other rigs outside of the observatory here in the yard, and that process isn't so bad. I kind of enjoy it in the summer. But in the winter, when the temperature drops below zero, things can become a little painful. My primary imaging telescope, camera, and mount live in the observatory, but everything else is in here in my garage, and it's getting a little out of hand. I dream of having a big, clean, organized garage with a spot for all of my astro stuff. Maybe a spot for filming or processing photos. But currently, this 1.5 car garage is full of lawnmowers, gardening tools, and patio furniture. What do you guys do to keep your garage clean with all your Astro stuff? Does it look like this? I put a small space heater here in the observatory. I keep it right under my desk so it keeps my feet warm, uh, but it's not enough to create any adverse effects to the air for astro imaging, or at least I don't think. I hope some of you have been able to catch a glimpse at Comet Leonard. I haven't seen it or photographed it once and it's kind of bothering me. It's actually in there somewhere below on the horizon. You can see how I have a really tough spot to try and see it from home and it just hasn't been clear. I'm gonna get the binoculars out and see if I can find it. I never did find the comet. I really wanted to. Oh, and it has a crazy tail now. Perfect. This video was sponsored by Cuts Clothing, a company founded in 2016. They just recently celebrated their five year anniversary. So their big thing is they focus on the cut of the shirt, whether that's the bottom, the split hem, or curved, elongated, or the collar, the V-neck, or hex it called crew v-neck henley now you know they created their own tri-blend fabric called pika pro which is just so soft and smooth and has a little bit of stretchiness to it it's all i wear now my closet is officially full that's a great thing because i really didn't have style until now i would like to think i have style i don't know the bottom line is cut supports astro backyard they have believed in me enough to put their clothes on me through all these videos so hopefully you've found something in their store that you like and if not you can just enjoy watching me wear their stuff for the foreseeable future so 
thank you so much to Cuts for sponsoring me this year and all the best for 2022. The Horsehead Nebula rises above my house by about 7.30 p.m. tonight. At this point, it's still only 15 degrees above the horizon, so pretty low, but I can't afford to miss out on any exposure time. I always like starting my imaging plans early anyway, even sometimes before it gets dark out. This gives me two or three exposures to kind of test framing and focus before I get into my actual imaging plan. Here's a look at a single four minute exposure of the Horsehead Nebula through my telescope. You can see the horse's head right here and then that bright glow of the emission nebula behind it. Here's the flame nebula and there's the bright star Alnitak. There's a few other cool things going on in here, some reflection nebulae and whatnot. So I'm hoping that these exposures improve my final image. There's some thin high clouds I'm shooting through right now. So it looks like they're going to pass soon. So hopefully I'll get an hour or two to add to my existing project. I'm in the office now and I'm reviewing my sub exposures captured that night of the Horsehead Nebula. And I was able to grab a few extra H alpha frames to add to my overall Horsehead Nebula project. But I wanted to show you something really cool that I just learned. Probably a lot of you know about it, but some of you don't. So if you're using Deep Sky Stacker like I am to review your FIT files captured by a dedicated astronomy camera, you'll know that it's not a great system for reviewing your files. It's not like these are raw files from a DSLR camera that you can just open up in Windows Explorer or Adobe Bridge and check them out. You need a specialized software to view these .fit files. So until now, I've been using Deep Sky Stacker to kind of review and manually reject frames with clouds in it or star trailing. It has a scoring feature as well, but I, I would always go through and click through these sub exposures to kind of review them. And it's just kind of laggy and there's no great way to zoom in and look at what's going on. Now I'm using the blink feature in PixInsight, which is so much better and there's no going back. It's an absolute game changer. So if you're not familiar with it, in PixInsight, there's a tool called Blink, where you open up all of your image files from a particular imaging session. And so I've got my, I've added my image files. Here they are right here. These are actually all my horse head and flame files in RGB from 2018. And I wanted to go back and do a restack just to make sure I'm using the best possible data from back then. So once you've got them all opened up in here, you can of course click on each one to ins inspect it, but even better, you can play a slideshow of the images at a you know defined setting. So at 0.05 seconds, if we press play, it's just gonna run through all of them and it kind of creates this movie. And as you'll notice, you can see that one really wonky star trailing frame in there. I don't know what happened there. And then when either the clouds came in or I ran into the roof of my house. But it's just so quick and easy to see and review your sub exposures using this blink tool. Once you've done that and you've kind of isolated the frames that need to get out of there, you can clear them from the list. You can copy things over to a new folder with all your best frames. Either way, Blink is the way to go to review your sub exposures if you're using a dedicated astronomy camera. And I wanted to share that with you. Okay, back to the video.